mayong adlaw o mayong adlaw sa tanahon. We are now down to the part 2 or the second part of our lecture discussion for the unit 3 about the component strategies to weed management and control. And on, in this video, we will discuss about the mode of action, the mechanism of action. We will try to define them and then elaborate them by showing some diagrams on the fate of our herbicide by the time nga ma-apply siya sa ato ang mga sa ato ang mga weeds and then we will also discuss about the herbicide selectivity herbicide resistance and herbicide susceptibility what is mode of action so mode of action is the sequence of events or the chain of events, the entire chain of events from the time that the herbicides comes in contact with the plant until the plant exhibits its response. So it's just a behind the scene or the story behind why plants die or survive. Because there are only two expected responses as far as mode of action is concerned. It's either survival or death. Survival if there is a negative response to the mode of action. And on the other hand, it's death if there is a positive response to the mode of action. And we will be able to learn why is it nga kung survive, survive bang ang tanom, no, it's a negative response. And kung mamatay, it's a positive response. Mechanism of action, on the other hand, is the primary site of action of the herbicide. And it is the specific biochemical process or site which is the primary target of the herbicide. And this mechanism of action usually happens at the site of action. And we will try to track and locate the chain of events. No? Nga no, unsa day mga highlights bahin aning the target site of the the plant by the time that we apply our herbicides. This diagram comprehensively explains the mode of action. Okay, so as what we have mentioned earlier that uh, mode of action is the entire sequence of events and we are only expecting two responses of the plant, either survival or death. Survival entails negative response to the mode of action and if death no then there is a positive response to the action the mode of action so we can only expect these two responses and it starts when the applied herbicide reaches the target okay and this is the first but the crucial step for the herbicide as it is retained on the surface of the plant. Oh, as the fact that it's crucial, the only probability of the herbicide of getting in contact depends on the following factors, which will also be discussed in the succeeding slides. Pero these following factors are the herbicide factor, the plant factor, and the environment factor. So herbicide factor could be about the solubility of the herbicide, the formulation, the vapor pressure or the specific gravity which pertains to the configuration of the herbicide when it reaches the plant. And plant factors could be about the morphology, the surface of the plant, the architecture, especially on how the plants look like, and even the age. And then for the environmental factor, we have either the temperature, the solar radiation, the soil type or properties, particularly on the type of soil or the organic matter content, then wind speed, wind speed, uh, microorganisms of the soil, and the rainfall. And especially for rainfall, there would be a less probability of the herbicide to contact if there is a heavy rain, especially if it's soluble to water. Okay, and then 
most plants have waxy layer covering on its surface. Particularly, we call that as cutin, which is a non-polar molecule. If you try to review your lessons in basic chemistry, no, kabalug yun taana unsa na ang polar o ang non-polar. And we stick to the rule of thumb that like dissolves like. And most of the water-based substances, no, just like or ang water itself, no, these are considered as polar. And on the other hand, most of the non-polar, ano, non-polar molecules, no, apil ana ang mga oil based which is technically a na the ano the composition of the cuticle na siya waxy layer so yeah most plants have waxy layer covering on its surface called cuticle if the herbicide use is an emulsifiable concentrate or kung nasa easy ng formulation kaya ang easy formulation it's oil based therefore it's non polar kaya naman siya cuticle no? There would be a greater probability for the herbicide to be absorbed by the plant. And on the other hand, kaning mga water-based herbicides, they also have its way of being absorbed, especially when there are wounds or cracks on the surface of the plant. But technically, no, or practically speaking, rather, uh, it would be best if you apply uh, oil-based herbicides, especially when you do, uh, when you when you apply foliar, no, when you apply herbicides sa mga sa mga foliage, okay? And mas effective ang ato ang mga water-based ng mga herbicide kung dito ni mo siya i apply dito sa roots, wherein wala siya ko ano, wala siya cuticle dito. And in assumption that the herbicide has been successfully absorbed by the plant, no, after the absorption, no, as long as dili siya madegrade, it will not be photo decomposed. Then it will undergo translocation. It will be translocated to its different parts, either through the leaves, no, especially sa phloem vessels or the roots or the xylem vessels. So these vessels are actually part of the vascular system and the phloem is responsible for the food transport no? and or the minerals including the nutrients and minerals and the xylem functions for the water transport. And then there are two types of translocation. It could either be short distance or long distance. So kung may nguntag long distance, no, kana siya nga translocation is mo ma translocate ning mga kaning herbicide, no, from the tipmost part to the roots. So it passes through the xylem and the phloem vessels and even for plasmodesmata. But there are some cases that uh, there is a short distance translocation wherein, no, there would be a one cell to another cell uh, translocation of the herbicide. Pinagi sa iyang plasmodesmata or even the cytoplasmic streamings of the cell. And then, the, if the herbicides are metabolized in the target site, then there would be changes in the configuration of its molecules. Then there would be the loss of toxicity, phytotoxicity Thus, the plants will survive. As you can see in the diagram, no, if our herbicides, as it reaches the target site, okay, there are there are two, kano, there are two outcomes nga ato ang ma expect. Either the the plants would survive or mamatay. So technically, no. By the time that herbicide reaches the target site, and even and if kung metabolize siya, then the herbicide becomes non-phytotoxic because there are changes in the configuration of its of, of its molecules. Then there would be changes or even loss of its phytotoxicity brought by the 
metabolism. So, that is why, kung naay mausab sa iyang phytotoxicity, then it would lead to the survival of the plant. On the other hand, if the herbicides are not metabolized on the site of action, then it becomes phytotoxic. Kaya kung wala na metabolize, meaning wala na usab ang iyahang configuration by the time that it reaches the target site or the site of action. Remember, in the site of action, that is where the mechanism of action happens. And with that, no, if wala siya na metabolize, then it becomes phytotoxic and it would lead to the death of the plants. As to the placement of the herbicide, it could either be soil applied or foliage applied or with the use of the foliar herbicide. So, mola, mola ang usa sa pamaagi on how we apply our herbicide. So, just like uh, what I've mentioned in the previous slide, then it would be best for us to use uh, water-based herbicides with water-soluble concentrate kung i-apply mo siya sa soil. But for foliage-applied herbicides or foliar herbicides, then uh, mas maayo kung ang imuhang gamiton is ang, ang oil-based nga herbicide. Okay? Because like dissolves like. And cuticle, having a waxy layer, no, is non-polar. So, if like dissolves like, then polar solvent would dis can dissolve polar solute. And non-polar solvent could also dissolve non-polar solute. Pero kung polar gali o non-polar then there would be no there would be no absorption, absorption that would happen. As to the rate, when you use selective herbicide, then the rate would be at lower level. So that you can make sure nga only those targeted weeds ang imuhang applyan and not the other plants. But as to the non-selective herbicides, then you can, you can do higher rate because uh, dili naman, wala naman kayo pakialam as such nga non-selective herbicide siya, wala pa siya pakialam kung crop na or weed pati yun gina niya mamatay gina sila herbicide selectivity is an important property of an herbicide that enables to kill some plants but not other plants a selective herbicide is one that kills or retards the growth of an unwanted plant or weed while causing little or no injury to desirable species. However, selectivity is good up to certain concentrations only. And chemical itself is only effective for a group of weeds. Nonetheless, when we talk about selectivity, true selectivity happens only when there is an interaction between the plant and the herbicide. And consequently, selectivity defines the practical importance in using herbicide in agriculture. Nga naman, kay kita nga mga tao, no? as humans, nobody in his right mind would apply herbicide to kill all the plants. We need plants. No? We need the crops. In fact, no? we classify them as crops because of the identified economic use or value. Selectivity involves the interaction of the plant, herbicide, and environment with the following factors. We have the plant factors, herbicide factors, and environmental factors as enumerated earlier. So, plant factors could either be about the morphology, the age of the plant, the growth rate, even the physiology and biochemistry. Or when we talk about the architecture of the plant, especially on how the plant looks like, or even its surface, which is under the morphology. Because whether the plant 
is land surface is rough or smooth, no? Makaapekto na siya sa retention of the herbicide nga gina-apply. And in terms of the herbicide factor, it could be about the solubility of the herbicide, no? Kung kung polar ba siya or non-polar or water-based ba siya or oil-based and then the formulation, the water pressure or vapor pressure rather and the specific gravity which signify the configuration of herbicide when it reaches the plant. And for the environmental factor, it could be about the temperature, the solar radiation, the soil type, the wind speed or the relative humidity, the microorganisms of the soil, and other biotic factors, and rainfall, especially for rainfall, because there would be a less probability of the herbicide to contact if there is heavy rain, especially if it's soluble to water. In terms of the plant surface, then it, the plant surface, surface could either be rough or smooth. But we all know that a rough surface has more retention. And in terms of the orientation of the leaves, whether horizontal or vertical na orientation, so we can see that there would be a high retention rate, high or higher retention rate when the orientation of the leaves sky horizontal compared to the vertical. Kaya dali siya mahulog. And as to the age, there would also be higher retention for older plants that compared to the younger plants tungod sa mga daghan na nga samad. Okay, daghan na kayo nga agian na siya nga, nga tanom. So that is why there is higher retention to the older plants. And in terms of the herbicide factor, it could either be about the formulation of the herbicide or even the specific gravity or the ability of the molecules to attract each other and that would affect the composition of your the droplets of your herbicide okay o gubanan pa nato vapor pressure wherein vapor pressure allows the herbicide to evaporate faster and in terms ana no if the sir, the specific gravity is higher then the droplets of the herbicide would be more circular but if the surface gravity is low then droplets would be would be not circular and with that mas effective siya kung dili circular ang droplets kay mas dako man siya og coverage for penetration when it comes in contact with the leaves and in terms of the environmental factor there are a lot of things that we can observe and explain no and there are some instances that environmental factor would allow the herbicides to get vanish no in terms of the solar solar radiation remember that solar radiation destroys bonds connecting atoms of the herbicides and in terms of the soil properties then there is a higher retention for clay type of soil because mas kano mas dako mas, there will be more surface area for absorption compared to the sandy soil na mas baba ang iyahang retention and in terms of the kano of the cationic or anionic uh, herbicide charges so remember nga ang normal nga net charge sa to ang soil is negative and that would affect the level of the kano da organic matter of your uh, the level of the organic matter rather and then uh, in terms of the microorganisms then there are microorganisms that also feed on the kano, the herbicide nga makita nato sa soil the following are the reminders when you use herbicide so first Always mix clean water with herbicides before application and refrain from using muddy water as this would reduce the herbicide efficacy. 
and then ensure all equipment such as the spray tanks, booms, and nozzles that are well cleaned after every use. Do not mix the herbicide together unless recommended and apply herbicides at a recommended rate in order to avoid under application or over application. And remember to wear proper protective equipment, especially the gloves, breathing mask, goggles, and other protective clothing when spraying. Because remember, herbicides are highly toxic chemicals. And now let's define what is herbicide resistance. But before that, uh, we define first kung unsan yung resistance. So resistance is the ability of the plant species to withstand the phytotoxicity of a chemical. So herbicide resistance is the inherent or acquired characteristics of plant species to withstand an herbicide dosage substantially higher than the concentration of the wild type or the susceptible type of the same species. Herbicide susceptibility is the natural sensitivity of the plant species to herbicide application. And tolerance is the reduced susceptibility or enhanced resistance. And herbicide resistance development results to intensive and continuous use of herbicides over many years. And this would result to the selection of traits that would allow weed species to survive specific dosages that would otherwise cause mortality. So atrazine is the first herbicide that have caused the development of resistance and it was reported on a broadleaf which is Senecio vulgaris as cited by Ryan of 1970. Now we will discuss about the integrated weed management. So this is a specific compartment under the integrated pest management that focuses on the weed control and management strategies for weeds. So integrated weed management or IWM involves the utilization of all feasible methods of prevention and control in a harmonious combination including the maximization of mortality factors to keep the weed below the economic threshold level with minimum cost and less harm to the environment. Accordingly, IWM is a system of combining two or more weed management systems at low inputs to obtain a level of weed suppression superior to that ordinarily obtained when one weed management system is used. So IWM may involve the combinations of cultural plus chemical, cultural plus biological, cultural plus preventive, biological plus chemical, or combinations of three or more of these systems. What are the factors that made IWM desirable? So there are six factors. First, the inability of any one method of weed control to completely solve the weed problem. So in that case, IWM uh, supports combination of two, two or more methods in order to solve a particular problem related to the controlling of the weeds. So, kumbaga, no man is an island ang concept. So, it appreciates the importance and value of the different methods that are being pulled together. And that is the rationale of uh, developing this IWM. And number two, there is a tendency of weeds to adapt to a given cropping system and thus escape control. And number three, the, the ability of the weeds to develop resistance to a frequently used herbicide. 
So, it has to be a vital step for us to formulate an intermittent uh, variation of the weed control management and strategies. And then, there is a tendency of certain cropping systems to favor the dominance of the specific weeds. So, it matters most with the changes in the cultural methodology or management practices. And that would also eventually change the composition of the weed population if we do IWM. And uh, there would also be a seasonal fluctuation in labor availability. Kung no, gamay ra ang manpower, then there are some control methods nga dili ni mo mabuhat, especially when you do uh, hand weeding. So, it requires much labor. So, if dili, kay, dili nga naka-available ang manpower, then you might switch to other methods that are deemed applicable for that specific situation. And then, we also have the reduction of the environmental degradation or hazard. So, uh, usaman yun sa mga kwano, uh, goal ani is not just to to ano, to control the weed population by not eradicating totally but also to reduce the consumption of pesticides which are ano, uh, control methods that would that would have a negative impact to the environment when we use them profusely so uh, malesa na itong paggamit sa mga chemicals just like the herbicide. So, we will be able to achieve not just the environmental safety, not just the economic viability, but also social acceptability. And remember, not all farmers are aware of this so-called IWM. And there are also some farmers or field technicians that are running out of choices, especially nga Kung ang ilahang, kung nila ilahang, ilahang farm, nila ilahang rice field, baka, baka ha, no kung lisod na kayo i-control ang weed, then, no, wala, nagyuban nga, wala na yung option, they would opt to use chemical control. And that is the good thing about the IWM. Because it appreciates all other methods that are also deemed uh, effective and beneficial in order to control our weeds. What are the control measures to reduce the weed population in lowland? So, we do land preparation, and then continuous flooding operation, hand weeding or mechanical weeders, and with the use of herbicides. And for the upland, no? Still, thorough land preparation for the purpose of providing a, an optimum environment for the growth and development of our crops. Providing a good head start for our crops to become more ano, competitive compared to our weeds. And then we also have the off burying or and healing up, intero cultivation, hand weeding, and hoeing, mulching, and with the use of herbicides. These are the weed control management strategies in rice areas, whether transplanted rice or direct seeded rice. So the weed control is usually being done as early as possible, especially that the critical period of competition would be around the first one-third to one-half in the entire duration or life cycle of the crop. For the dry seeded rice and for the upland rice. And for the legumes,
What is of burying and healing up? Of burying is the cultivation method in which the plow is passed along each side of the row and close enough to the base of the seedlings, furrowing the slice of the soil away from the plants. So of burying is usually being used in an animal drone plow and you just simply turn the soil away from the plant. And on the other hand, in healing up, the soil from the center of the space between rows is thrown towards the base of the plants. So healing up is usually being done or common, being commonly being applied for corn and even for adlai. For the inter-row cultivation for maize, we do off burying for around 14 to 18 days after planting and healing up for about uh, 26 to 34 days after planting. And for sugarcane and cassava, we do off burying at 30 days after planting and healing up at 40 days after planting. Okay, as to the chemical weed control, the following are the, recommend, the herbicides used and the recommendation rates, the time of application, and the weed group control, as you can see in the table. And this is all of our discussion. Thank you very much for listening, Agi Freshies, and have a fun-filled summer. Hope you would withstand with all of your heart. This is Sir Junri Rimolios signing off.